Coming up, some car talk. Imagine a condom, and then you have protection for that condom. The ever so satisfying before after. The difference is astonishing. And back on the road, briefly. Hello and welcome to sixth and what should be a final episode of Project Marbay, at least for now. In the previous few episodes, we managed to fix everything mechanically that this car needed. It runs superbly, it passed German tooth inspection, and it doesn't need anything else in that department. License plates are coming pretty soon, and we should be driving this car by the end of this episode. Now we're going to focus on the exterior and interior. Now I need to strip that door over there and all of the trim around it, because the car is going for paint tomorrow. Once it comes back, we're going to do paint correction, protect the paint, and then do the interior. It's a bit stuffy and moldy inside. The car has been sitting for 10 plus years, so I just want to make it nice and clean, and then we can finally hit the road. In case you're not familiar with it, this is my paint booth, state-of-the-art technology. These are all different paint samples that I tried so far of Delphi Metallic, which is the color of the car. Ignore that, slight accident. And none of them are a match. I mean, you can even see it here. They're all different shade. And the problem that I have here, this car was almost entirely repainted back in 2000 when it had rust removed and I have no idea what kind of paint they used back then. So out of all of these, this one is kind of the closest in matching. Not a perfect match, but close. So this is the damage on the door. This happened when Michel was taking the car out and he caught this on the edge of the garage. Not a big deal, stuff happens. And if this was original paint, I would just straighten this out and leave it as it is. But since it's not, it's starting to rust here and it looks ugly. I just want it fixed to where it looks nice. And this is the paint that I mentioned earlier. Obviously, it's not the exact match to this paint. But after trying eight samples, or I don't even know how many right now, none of them match. This is the one that's kind of close. I'm always skeptical about doing paint work, of course. But the guy that's going to do the work has me convinced that once he's done, I'm not going to be able to tell the difference. So what we need to do now is strip this door, remove all of this trim here, 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 and just make it easy for him to work and repaint this thing. Do I need to remove the mirror? Really? We need to remove the mirror. That's the trim removed. And the mirror removed. I also want to remove these two trims because they look very pitted and there's some surface rust here, so we can repaint them as well. So there are two 8 mil bolts on the back holding this thing in. What now? This is a nightmare. You have to remove all of the trim to remove the trim that you actually need to remove. Is that like glued together or what? Oh, it's riveted in place. Hopefully I don't regret taking this trim off. What an absolute nightmare. Worst window trim I ever had to remove. It's all one big piece. And you have rivets on the back. Now this trim over here. Oh. I'm moving the entire car. Yep, we have a nut inside. Now we need to remove the door panel to access and remove the door handle, keyhole, and this mechanism. He's gonna have to paint in here as well. Here we are. That's the tab that we need to pull out and then we can remove the key cylinder. Yeah, great. Launched it God knows where. That's the lock cylinder removed. So to remove the handle, rather simple. Two screws here. Brilliant. That's pretty much everything I wanted to remove removed. He can mask up everything else. The only thing left to be removed is the door lock mechanism. He can do that himself, only three screws here. The car is going on a tow truck tomorrow, so we need to be able to close the doors properly. Next time you see this car, it'll be repainted. At least that section over there. Hopefully it'll look good. Cross your toes. The car is back from the painter, and what do you think? How did we do? We did excellent! Look at that! It looks brilliant! This is where the damage was, and it's gone. And the best part of it, everything matches. You can't even tell that anything was repaired on this side of the car. I'm stoked. 
The guy who did the work, he did excellent work. He fixed the damage here properly, pulled the metal out, and then he had to blend in this door here and a little bit here as well, clear everything, and it looks perfect. I was really scared about paint matching because, as I said, I tried six, seven samples, nothing matched, but in the end, he found something, and when you do blending and whatnot, it just looks perfect. I'm really, really happy about this. I will take it outside to show you how this looks in the daylight, but it's spitting rain. So now we're gonna reassemble the trim and hopefully tomorrow I can take it outside and show you how brilliant all of this looks. He had to paint on the inside as well and everything just looks excellent. This trim was in pretty rough shape, so I just used some semi-gloss black and well, it looks great now. I am kind of regretting for removing all of this trim because it was painful to remove and it's gonna be even more painful -er -er if that even is a word to put it back. So we gotta do this on the other side as well, but I'm not gonna remove the trim because I broke million clips and stuff and everything. So we're just gonna mask everything up over there and then do the thing. Now we're gonna clean all of this and then put this back on. No one is even going to see any of this and yet I'm cleaning it. And you good people all love it. This is back in, absolutely horrible to put back in. Never remove this if you don't have to. It's just, I'm really regretting it. Finally, it's all back together. Here it is in daylight. It's really filthy and dusty, but you can see that everything on this side of the car matches perfectly. That was really important to me that the work is done properly and that the paint matches because there's nothing worse than mismatched doors and panels. But even if you come up close, you can't tell anything was repaired here. Everything lines up perfectly, it's sitting flush. When you open the doors as well, everything is done neatly there. So I'm really happy. The guy who did the work, he does everything himself and I can definitely recommend him. So if you need body work in Frankfurt area, shoot me an email and I'll put you in touch with him. He has really reasonable prices and the work is really good. Now I'm gonna paint the trim on this side of the car as well to match the other one. Let that dry and we're gonna apply several coats. Such a small thing, but it looks so much better. I'm also gonna do the door handle a bit later when we start polishing the car, but I'm really happy with this. Now we're gonna start with the interior cleanup. I'm gonna remove the front seats, clean the carpets, scrub the rest of the interior and replace some bits. So let's get going. <laughs> By the way, I was supposed to be doing this back in October, September, something like that. It's, it's nearly middle of December and I'm doing this now. It's super cold, polishing, cleaning car, this time in a garage that has no heating. Not fun. I have new mats coming as well. It's one light seat. It's not even that dirty in here. About the easiest seat to remove ever. I'm gonna get the rear bench out as well. All right. I'm gonna remove the steering wheel as well because we're replacing that. So now I'm gonna start with the vacuuming session. To clean the carpets, really simple. I have a small carpet extractor, drill, brush attachments, carpet cleaner, and carbon fiber towels.
And now to clean the pedals, compressed there. Lovely. And by now you should be familiar with the next step, which is copy paste on the other side. So I'm gonna remove the rear shade from the back window. It's currently not working and I wanna see if I can fix it. Here it is. The carpet didn't look that dirty, but look at that. It was pretty dirty. Now we're gonna start cleaning the plastic in the interior. So I have some detailing brushes, cleaner from my friends from Gion, some cockpit care, and do I really need to say it? Ah, it smells good, this cleaner. I removed the window rolling thing device because we're gonna treat that separately, but that door panel is looking mint. So all of the plastic in the interior is now clean. Everything thoroughly scrubbed, protected, even in the back of the door panels, the ceiling. And now we're gonna move on and clean the windows. Just some regular window cleaner. So we're gonna clean all around and then sort out this rust as well. Both seats done, and we have mint looking seats. This is the trunk mat. I'm gonna give that a quick clean as well. Looking fresh. Now we're gonna focus on some small details. These are lift me up and lift me down handles for the windows. And these are the clips for the rear sunshade. As you can see, it's pretty rusty. And these guys are also made from metal and paint is coming off. So we're gonna throw this into my new machine and make them look brand new. This is my new vapor blasting cabinet, Aqua Blast 1215 from Vixen Surface Treatments. There will be a separate video of the workshop build where I get this machine, talk you through what it does, how it works and so on. But right now, I just want to demonstrate a little bit what this thing can actually do. Put the parts in. So let's start with the small rusty parts. Look at that. Instantly. And that's the finish straight out of the cabinet. It looks amazing. Now we're gonna paint this. First, we're gonna do primer. Okay. 
So let's see if we can figure out how to get this thing to work properly. Oh, well, it's already kind of working. I think it just hasn't been used in forever and that's why. So it's not perfect, but it does work. And now the shift knob, this is the one from the car, the original one, and I was hoping to get the same type just in letter. So I searched on real OEM, found the same picture, ordered it, and ended up with this. This one is letter, but not the same type, as you can see. And I searched everywhere to find exactly this one in letter, and I couldn't find it. So if you know the part number for that, do let me know. In the meantime, we're going to go with this one. I believe that's for the facelift E30 or something like that. And then we have this thing on the top. Then we have a brand new shift boot and handbrake boot from the UK. This is the old one that's torn, has holes and stuff. So let's see if we can replace it. Yeah, it took me a minute to put that on, but looks lovely, doesn't it? This one doesn't fit. I guess we're using the rubber one then. Working shade going back in. New boot. Ah, that looks lovely. I gotta be honest with you. I don't like the shift knob one bit. It's too tall and just looks out of place. So off it comes. And for now, the old one is going back in. And I found the same type with letter now on eBay from Latvia. I ordered it 80 euros. It's going to come in two weeks. So when it comes in, I'm going to swap it in. But for now, I'm going to go with this one because it just looks more appropriate than this one. And now the orange on the top of the cake, the m -Tech steering wheel that Felix rewrapped in the previous episode. If you want to see how this steering wheel gets wrapped, go and watch the previous part. But this thing is beautiful. And now we're going to put it in. And now the last touch for the interior, brand new, genuine floor mats. Velour. Driver's side one. I think that they even have a small logo right over there. Pop it in. It's perfect. Comes with these to secure them in place. Come on now. You piece of shit. So these clips that are supplied with the floor mats are completely useless. They're too short and cannot poke the carpet. So we're gonna roll without them. And with that, the interior is done and it looks beautiful. Proper, original time capsule. And now the final stage, paint correction. It might not look like it from where you're standing, but trust me, this car needs paint correction badly. It was thoroughly washed. I can't show you that because Germany, but rest assured it was done in a high-tech, state-of-the-art car wash facility. And after I clay barred the entire car, which it also needed badly, and it is a must-do step before paint correction. And now we're gonna do the paint correction. So let me show you the products and stuff that we're going to use. Make no mistake, Cap. I'm not a professional detailer. If you wanna get in depth with all of this and get some really useful tips, I highly recommend Larry Casilla's MONYC channel. The man is just a legend and when it comes to detailing, he's, he's the man. That being said, I do know what I'm doing and I paint corrected several cars with great success. And this is my, let's call it easy approach. I have two dual action polishers, the big one and the small one, premium carbon fiber towels, polishing compounds. These two are for paint correction. And I love Meguiar's M105. It gives great results, but the downside is residue and dust, and it creates a lot of it. And one subscriber recommended that I try this one, and it's supposedly giving the same results as M105, but not making a mess, so we're gonna try that. Polishing foam pads, different hardness, masking tape, paint thickness gauge. We need that to make sure that the paint and clear coat that we're polishing, there's enough of it. And to protect the paint, we're gonna use ceramic coating from my friends from Gion. I love ceramic coating. I did that on Project Dubai and that should protect the paint for at least two years with proper care. I don't enjoy detailing. It's very time consuming and labor intensive, but I do very much love the end result. So let's look at the paint and get to work. You can see in reflection there just how badly this car needs paint correction. It's all swirled up and scratched up. 
And this is pretty typical for any car, especially an old car that hasn't been detailed in forever. So we're going to remove all of those furrows and go for that nice shiny mirror finish. So I'm going to start with the hood just to get the feel for it and see what approach I need to take. 330, this hood has been repainted, so we are safe to polish. All right, so I'm going to lubricate my pad and then start with the medium one and see how we fare on. I've done exactly two passes and look at the results. The difference is astonishing. So I'm gonna crack on, do the entire hood and then we're gonna move the car to the other lift because it'll be easier to lift it in the air for when I do the sides of the car. Oh yes, M539 detailing. And this, ladies and gents, is why I don't like detailing. Because I become obsessed with perfection on a car that's nearly 40 years old and I ended up doing six hours perfecting this hood. And I removed all of the swirls, scratches, about 98% of them are gone. There are some really deep ones and to get it 100% I would need to wet sand the hood. But I don't want to do that because it just looks fabulous and I don't want to thin the clear coat any more than this. And this is stage one. Now we need to do the final polish and then, well, the rest of the car. But it's gonna look magnificent. Showroom quality. The final polish is done with Meguiar's 205. And this step is gonna go a lot quicker than the previous one because in the previous one is where you remove all of the swirls and scratches and stuff. And this one is gonna give it that nice lovely shine, remove haze and all of the small scratches. So let's get to work. Oh, this car is gonna look so freaking good. So I knew that this thing is gonna look good, but this good, this is pretty ridiculous. It looks immaculate. I'm loving it, I really am. This was super, super time consuming, but look at the results. This car is gonna pop like crazy. All right, the hood is done. Now we're gonna move on to the roof and the rest of the car. The process is the same for everything. Just finished the roof, another six hours to complete this part of the car. It's going incredibly slow and difficult. This clear coat, it's really hard to cut. And Griot's cutting compound, it's having difficulties cutting through it. So I ended up using 3M green cap bottle and that's cutting a bit faster, but still it's pretty darn slow. But the results, they speak for themselves. I mean, look at that roof. That is a mirror finish. It looks stunning. I'm gonna be afraid to drive this car after this.
four. Four days it took to complete the paint correction. I started this morning at 8.30, it's Sunday, and it's seven in the evening now, 7.15, and I just finished paint correcting the car. I'm never doing this again. Never ever am I polishing a car on my own. It's just not worth my time, I can't justify it. The video is way, way too late. My girlfriend is about to leave me, find someone normal who's not obsessed with cars. But the car does look stunning. It's just next time I'm gonna have team from Gion do all of this because professional team, they can do it in a day, even quicker, because there's many people working on the car at once. Myself, it just takes way too long. The car looks absolutely beautiful. It turned out a lot better than I was expecting. The paint cleaned up so good. But that's another thing. I was thinking two day stops, this car is gonna be done, but the clear coat, it's really, really hard and difficult to cut. And that's why it took four days because I was aiming to get it 98, 99% perfect. So it looks really good. And now we're gonna put ceramic coating on it. But first I need to use compressed air to blow out all of the dust and stuff, then the prep thing, and then we're gonna apply the ceramic coating. Before we apply ceramic coating, first we need to clean the surface and we're gonna use Gion Prep. We need to remove all of the contaminants and polishing compounds that we just used and the surface needs to be perfectly clean before we can apply ceramic coating. So I'm gonna go all around the car, clean all of the surfaces and then we're gonna apply ceramic coating. This evaporates pretty quickly, but you wanna have one dry as well, just to go over it twice. That's the ceramic coating and the application device. So applying ceramic coating is actually pretty easy. We're gonna do it like that. It's way too much. And then start working small area at a time. And I'm also gonna go and mask up in a minute because this stuff is poison. Now you need to leave that for a few seconds and then wipe it off. And that's the hood done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat this process for the entire car. Finally finito, the whole car is coated. Now it needs to sit like this for 24 hours for this thing to cure, and then we can take it for a drive, but that's okay because there's stuff that we need to do in the meantime. But tomorrow, it's 10 in the evening now, so it's time to go home. See you manana. Man, it looks beautiful. Guten Morgen, come over here, we need to apply more stuff. And now we're gonna apply the cure. Imagine a condom, and then you have protection for that condom. That's this for ceramic coating. Couple of spritz on fresh carbon fiber towel, wipe it off all over the car, and this thing is protected like crazy. Look at that. So this is stuff that you use to refresh the coating and make it last longer. And with that, the paint is extremely well protected, at least two years, if not more, with proper care. If I hand wash it and occasionally apply cure, to refresh the ceramic coating. And the best part of it, it's gonna be super easy to clean all of the dirt and dust. You can just hose it off, dry it, and it's gonna be super clean. So I'm really stoked about that. But now let's move on to something else. Remember when I said we're gonna keep these steel rims? Think in part two. Well, I didn't lie, we are going to keep them, but on the shelf over there. Welcome everyone to freshly repainted 15 inch original BBS rims. I know I was kind of adamant on keeping the steel rims, but then I saw an E30 in person with 14 inch BBS rims and it looked so good that I decided that I had to have them. So these are 15 inch, a little bit bigger, so they're gonna fill in the gap perfectly. They were actually quite difficult to find and expensive, 550 euros in pretty rough shape. But most of them, they don't have the caps that are original BBS caps made from metal. 
And the same guy that painted the door, he repainted these as well. And they just look lovely. Brand new summer tires too. I put some protection on it. And now we're gonna put them on the car. I think it's gonna finish it off beautifully. I just draw it back and forth for the suspension to settle in the front and it looks absolutely glorious. It really does. The gap, however, does not look great. And I did say in the previous episode that I'm gonna put M Sport Springs on it to lower it a little bit. And I had full intention of doing that, but the guy that was supposed to sell me the springs, he was on vacation at the time. And he said, once I come back in three weeks, I'm gonna ship you the springs. Well, he came back from vacation and then changed his mind. He doesn't wanna sell the springs. And I can't find another use set so for now, we're gonna rock the stock right height and then come springtime, I'm probably gonna install Eibach lowering springs. For now, I just wanna see how the car feels with stock springs and Bilstein B6 shocks. If it's too harsh, then if I put lowering springs, it's gonna be even more harsh and I'm not gonna like that. So I wanna see how it feels like this first and then we're gonna take it from there. I also said I wanna put a different exhaust on it and I also wanted to do that. I wanted to go with Simmons exhaust because it's a full system and it has dual pipes in the back, but it's not in stock, I can't find it. It's gonna be in stock like spring as well. So maybe come springtime, that's the two things that we're gonna to do to improve this car a little bit more. But for now, I'm loving this. Let's do the rears. Now that the rear wheels are off, we can confirm that this car does not have a rear sway bar. And that's a little bit dangerous. So I bought one along with parts to fit it. And well, now we're gonna try and fit it. It doesn't look like the subframe needs to come down, but I'm not sure if I can sneak it all the way around here. It would be nice to have a rear sway bar because I don't want this car to end up in a ditch with me in it. So let's look at the parts. Here's the rear sway bar that I bought used, 15 millimeters of sheer thickness and all new hardware, bushings, brackets, links. So first I'm gonna remove all of the old stuff clean it and then see if we can put it on the car fairly easily. Okay. Oh, you sneaky little. Oh, there we go. Where are you cut on? Oh, wow. It's in like that. Yes, of course I cut myself open. Perfect. There you go. Come on, you can do it. This goes here, I believe. Silicon spray, slides like butter. All right, tighten this all the way once it's on the ground. Boom, and just like that, the rear sway bar is in. Let's put the wheels back on. It looks spectacular, doesn't it? BBS rims, always a good choice. You also have to keep in mind that the springs are brand new, the suspension is brand new, so we need to drive it and it needs to settle a little bit more but I'm thinking it's still gonna need lowering springs because this is just ridiculous. So come springtime, we're gonna do that. Probably a different exhaust and I don't know if it's gonna need anything else. But for now, it's sitting very pretty, very pretty. All right, next, couple of small things. See these bezels around the headlights? They're looking quite poor. So I wanna replace that and put fresh bulbs in the headlights as well. Okay. I need to polish the chrome as well. The brand new ones that I ordered are wrong. They do not fit. No idea how I ended up with the wrong part number, but let's forget about that. These are used ones that I have laying around. They're in really nice shape. Certainly much better than what's on the car right now, so we're gonna use that. And some fresh bulbs. This should be fairly straightforward. A little bit of cleaning. Beautiful. Very small, subtle detail, but makes all the difference for the front end. Let's confirm that I got wrong bulbs as well. Ah! Come on, you bastard. Well, the washer bottle looks like I got the right one. So that's all of the bulbs replaced. And lastly, I'm gonna go around the car and polish the chrome, make that pop as well. I tried earlier and it just removes the spitting or whatever it is that's on top of the chrome rather easily. Yep. 
Yeah, that looks nice. The chrome is nice and shiny all around, looks beautiful. And this plastic trim, it's a bit faded and looking kind of ugly. So I tried three different back to black thing restorers. None of them work. I tried ceramic coating, didn't work. I tried tire dressing, didn't work. So at one point I'm gonna have to remove all of this and just paint it quickly because that's the only way to make it permanently look black. Otherwise I'm just gonna smear that stuff and make it look nice occasionally. This is the original toolkit in the car, never used, but as you can see, there's some surface rust on it. So we need to take care of that. So I could put this into my vapor blasting cabinet, but problem with that is this is steel which means it'll start to rust again afterwards if I don't treat it with something, paint it or whatever. And I don't want to do that, so instead I'm just going to use evapor rust, which is going to remove all this rust and give us that nice finish, and it won't start rusting again anytime soon. Cheers. Good. Leave that to cook while we do something else. So this has been cooking for five or six days, I'm not even sure. And evapor rust, unfortunately, didn't do a very good job at evaporating the rust. It did remove most of it, but then it just converted the rust to black stains, as you can see. And that doesn't look very good. It looks crap. So I think we're going to put this into my vapor blasting cabinet. And after all, make it look brand spanking new. And after that, we're just going to coat it in oil so it doesn't rust. Excelente. Yeah, gonna look brand new. And here's everything after a quick blast. That's more like it. And now to stop it from rusting, everybody's favorite fogging oil from men. Now we need to flip them around. So I'm just gonna wipe the tools and put them back in. Gotta remove the old foam. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. So here's a brand new one, original part. So you should cover up the old residue that is extremely difficult to remove. So I'm gonna spray some glue onto this thing and then glue it on. The sniffing stuff has been applied. Now let's just see how I'm gonna put it in position. Look at that. Such a professional job. I just wanna quickly mention the cluster. This is the early E30 pre-facelift pre cluster and they're known for being garbage because they have batteries inside and batteries well they leak and this cluster was working fine for the most part although i did have one issue with it it was giving me the light for the brake pads and the brake pads and the sensor itself were fine it was just an error within the cluster and when i opened it up to replace the batteries well they leaked out and ruined the circuit board so there was nothing i can do to fix it but a very nice subscriber named Christian has very good experience with these clusters. He serviced many of them over the years, has the parts to fix them. So he offered to repair it and he did that. And now the cluster is working flawlessly. No errors, no issues whatsoever. I'm stoked about that. Thank you very much, Christian. And finally, the license plates. My very first car with H at the end, which stands for historic and means that this car is over 30 years old and that it passed old timer tooth. And that is recognized as an old timer, which is quite a nice thing in Germany. The yearly tax, it's just under 200 euros. Insurance is not that expensive either. So I'm really happy about that. The letters and numbers I picked, there isn't much that you can play with here. You have to have F for Frankfurt, then one or two letters and numbers, but pretty much all of the cool ones are already taken. So this is what I ended up with. So let's put them on the car. Excellent. Awesome. And to keep the green party happy, this is a sticker. Very good. It looks like million bucks. Minus 990,000, but what a good looking car. I can't believe how well it cleaned up. 
I really wish the weather was nicer so I can properly show you this paint, but it's spectacular in person. It's mirror finish. Look at that trunk lid. Look at the reflection. Just incredible. And bear in mind, I still didn't wash the car. It's still super cold outside and I want to leave ceramic coating to dry it for as long as possible, but it looks incredible. It's official. This is the nicest car that I own. Yep, that happened. I'm totally fine. No one else was involved. The only thing hurt is my pride. I f***ed up. You see, E30, it's not E46. Wet, slippery forest road, and this thing is not going to forgive you. It was slow and my fault, but I professionally decorated the front end of the E30. I feel heartbroken, ashamed, embarrassed, and like I let everyone down. Michelle, from the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry. Don't want to go into too much details and make drama out of this. This is the biggest mistake I ever made. A very difficult way to learn a very important lesson. But I'm going to own it and fix it. So I'll see you in part seven whenever that is.